Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So we want to thank you, as always, for your support over on Patreon. Couldn't do it without the support over there. As, uh, you know, these times are just crazy and there's so much going on. We want to jump right into this. You have thousands gathering at El Asuka Mosque. And now this is again in Jerusalem. After the dawn prayer on the third Friday of Ramadan. They're chanting, with our souls and with our blood, we avenge you, O Asuka. According to this uh, particular tweet by Tab Z. We've talked all about what else is going on uh, with the eventual plan of a third temple, which we get is somehow already, we don't understand the information, but it, it says that it's already done somehow. Um, while we have seen that they've built basically places to start um, slaughtering and doing sacrifices of these cows yet again, and the Temple Institute, as you see, leading the way, revealing the path ahead for the Red Heifer ceremony. And Cindy was getting uh, and talking about, well, you can get somebody to just go dab them with a piece of paint and they can't they can't <laughs> they can't go ahead and sacrifice them because they're not perfect anymore. You know, you turn some cute little three or four year old loose with a Sharpie <laughs> marker and some color crayons. It wouldn't take much to really throw this off. It really, really wouldn't. That's the thing. That's why I feel that they're completely forcing it. Um, if they wanted to find uh, something on these red heifers that would uh, disqualify them, they would. If they want to find red heifers that are perfect and ready for this uh, moment in time, they will. And to me, this is 100% man-made. This is not something from God. This is nothing to do with our source, our God, our, our energy that is so sacred. This is all man-made. That's how I see it. <clears throat> yeah, actually, you know, going way, way back years ago there, and I'm not even sure if they're still out there. There was a YouTube channel called Spirit Science. And while, you know, some of the stuff seemed accurate to a degree, some of the stuff seemed off to a degree. But it was interesting because they said that the Abrahamic tradition came from Mars and it came from uh, basically the bringing of beings from Mars to Earth, uh, and they're the ones that brought the Abrahamic tradition. They're the Ijiji, and, you know, again, we see the Ijiji referenced uh, in the Sumerian scripts, and we have gotten from the guides that, that once there was a group of Ijiji that literally ran this planet instead of the Anunnaki uh, that are not physically here um, they can come and go um, but as far as you know looking back to the days of old when the Anunnaki could be found in their temples uh, literally quite literally this is how it reads when you read the Sumerian uh, writings and this is again it's you'll have people try to discredit it by saying it's Zechariah Sitchin Zechariah Sitchin doesn't even have to ever have been born for any of this to change because, you know, it wasn't like he all of a sudden <laughs> was the only person that ever translated these these writings. No, uh, you know, these writings have been translated 100 years before he ever wrote any books, many of them. And there's still tons that haven't been translated. And they're, they're still in the process. There's so many of these Sumerian tablets that give us a clear picture as to really our reality is much more akin to Star Wars than what we've grown up thinking biblically. biblically. Uh, it's just simply not accurate. The words are not accurate. And, you know, people like uh, Paul Davies and um, Mauro Bellino have done a, a wonderful job. Again, go check out The Fifth Kind and go check out 
um, Moro's books, uh, you know, they've done a great job. He he translated for the Vatican, and you could just look. Like, I, I've bought a, a copy of the Talmud, and, yeah, it doesn't say creator of the universe. No, it, instead it says master, ruler. Yeah, a very, very different thing. Not creator. No, no, no. Conqueror, like Caesar. This is what we're talking. This is the system. And so you know, when you see all this, um, you know, it, it, anything from the system makes me nauseous. I, I just can't tolerate it anymore, at, at all anymore. It's just so repulsive to me. And I grew up in that system. But, but now, you know, coming to a complete understanding um, after uh, 47 plus years of biblical study, you know, it hit me as a teen. This is this is a big aha. Wow, this is all extraterrestrials doing this. Oh boy, that was a real um, sick pit of your stomach type feeling when all of a sudden I realized that. So they say the Torah, which is the first five books of the Old Testament, commands us to perform the mitzvah, which is a Torah commandment, in order to be in a ritually pure condition. It takes blood. This, this is the system. And, and war is a blood sacrifice. When they dress up soldiers in their little uniforms, that's the same thing as bringing red heifers up to uh, you know, a sacrificial altar. War is a blood sacrifice for demonic entities. And it's even, you know, here you can go anywhere and, and see. The first name used for God in Scripture is Elohim. In this form, the word is masculine plural. Plural. Masculine plural. The concept of the Trinity is, is not one of uh, traditional Judaism. No, it's not. <laughs> so, hey, yeah, you got a problem there because things don't go together because they've been distorted on purpose. Now, you know, we could um, look at Nostradamus as, as just somebody that sells uh, the star and all those tabloids with his works and stuff. But the reality is he did a thousand plus prophecies with uh, a good deal of detail and yeah we are talking 1555 ish when he put it into writing so languages change if we were to listen to people speaking english in 50, 1555 none of us in the u.s would probably understand hardly anything if anything i mean because languages change so translations change and the other thing that changes is like finding links that I was just using maybe six months ago, bringing these things up. They're, they're not even there anymore. They're, they're wiped out. This tells me also that we are so damn close um, to all this, you know, starting up for real. It is. It is starting. I, I, I really can't see uh, this not being this year when everything gets going in earnest. I wish we had another year to prepare. Um, but, you know, we could still change timelines if we all do our part to wake up enough people in time. As, as you know, I keep looking at that date, 329, 2024, the famous Mabus squat train. Mabus then will soon die. There will come of people and beasts a horrible rout. Then suddenly one see, will see vengeance, hundred. Now, this has been a contentious point that hundred hand thirst hunger when the comet will run well the, the i think this is the comet that will run and i've always watched intently every comet since you know maybe about 1975 uh and this is really i think the one which is in reality in our opinion uh, a ship now, the, the key is, who is Mabus, and, and what is this? What, to me, this rings so clear that this is going to be an assassination that triggers unification of many people. Now, maybe, uh, again, the translations could be off 100 lands, or you know, perhaps you know, something along those lines, 
Um, we'll have to see how it comes because hundred in hand makes me think of Caesar with every single one of the Senate going and stabbing him uh, to all take part in some sort of assassination. But there's two people that really stick out as being critical uh, in the time frame. And there's so many different quatrains that talk about a huge Islamic Muslim led jihad on, on the Western world which, again, we can see that taking place right now. This particular quatrain, uh, the fifth one, is the one that I was focusing in on. That which is enclosed in iron and letter in a fish, out will go one who will then make war. Now, you could see that. Iron and letter in a fish, that sounds like a submarine fleet. Uh, out will go one who will make war. He will have his fleet well rowed by sea, appearing near Latin land. Another transformation said that suddenly a fleet would pop up out of nowhere off the Italian coast. As you can see, different ways of translating that. And I do think that what we are looking at around it are, are also giving elaboration on the same scenario from Monaco to near Sicily. So all along the Mediterranean coast, the entire coast is going to be desolate. There will remain no suburb, city, or town not pillaged and robbed by the barbarians. When you see what's going on with the immigrants that have come into uh, not just you know the United States but also Europe, you can see what they're talking about. But this is also about this is also about the war that's coming, and it is following up. So, you know, now right now, as, as we speak, Russia has sent uh, warships into the Red Sea. And the Red Sea is, is uh, a very, very narrow sea over there um, alongside uh, Egypt and Saudi Arabia that has access into the Mediterranean. And also, obviously, we can also go through the pillars of Hercules around, um, you know, the coast of Africa and go into the Mediterranean that way. Not to say there isn't already um, a, a submarine fleet in, pre in, in place in preparation for attacks on Europe because Europe it, it clearly from Nostradamus's writings is going to be invaded and it's not just Nostradamus as, as the U.S. is to be invaded as well. Uh, Nostradamus, why would we pay attention to him? Well, you know, he was the insider's insider. He worked directly for the monarchy and the church. You, you don't get any more insider than that. Mm -mm. No, no, you don't. And they do find these people and they put them in uh, positions that they simply can't deny. I mean, they set him up and set him up for life and many, many <laughs> other generations to come. So, I mean, that's just what they do. And then they tell you the storyline. And because they're in control of everything, they can make these things happen. And then they call it, you know, then they then they say, oh, you know, see, uh, we're right. <laughs> we, we, we did predict what God said when reality they have total control over everything and when i say they these are a group of entities that are not of complete human form but they do have direct contact with human the ability to channel humans and get humans to do what they're supposed to do to make these predictions come true and just to make sure I finish on my thought going back farther, when we talked about the power structure coming from Mars to Earth, that is really what, what is there as the lower level, um, lower management, we could say, was sent from Mars to Earth uh, to run the Earth as the t after the takeover by the Draconian uh, Anunnakian forces. And there was a group of what we would call EGGs. Uh, EGG were those lower level, lower management. Um, they're, they're spoken of as lower gods. But again, God is just a term that's been used in a biblical sense, um, in an Abrahamic sense, uh, and also in a pagan sense to refer to beings that have more technology than us. Just that simple. That's all it is. More technology, clearer understanding of what's going on. And in fact, we, we had gotten that there was when uh, Cindy and I started to do this together at that point in time, there was three 
of the original GG that came from Mars still left on the planet. Now there was just one, and it was on life support um, close to death. It might not even be here anymore. Um, Cindy says it's barely alive, but it's still here. Um, and that is the one that is known biblically as Noah. That is Ut Napishtim from the Sumerian uh, tales. As when you look to uh, the Sumerian tales, what is his fate? He's turned immortal. He's given immortality, which is not really immortality, just an exceedingly long life. And he is here. In fact, you know, he has been uh, the pinnacle of human, quote unquote, sort of. Because <laughs> again, there's many different uh, strains of, of humanoid beings that have been upon the planet. But that has been uh, the pinnacle of the power structure here on the planet, uh, on planet. And again, just simply relaying to the off-planet control system what's going on. So if you could confer that, then you understand exactly what the bigger picture is. What is that? that I think most, the vast majority, just like the vast majority of humanity doesn't have a clue as to the bigger picture, it's the same thing within the religions. They don't understand that in so many ways, it's not really a religion. It's not really a spiritual religion. It's a distortion, and it's, it's a control system, a control matrix. And so why uh, trying to separate different bloodlines? Why does 23andMe make special note of Ashkenazi, you know, that word that begins with J. It's because, again, there's bloodlines that they're tracing. And, yeah, uh, there's certain ones that came from Mars that were part of the uh, management system over there that were brought over here to be part of the management system over here. Most of them don't have a clue that that's the real thing is what they're what they're tracking is is again um, genetic lines that again are more easily uh, overshadowed by certain beings that's really what they're tracking and this is something that we <clears throat> we went over on patreon the video we did on patreon just um not too long ago uh, uh, as far as these beings they don't need to speak to humans when they are in proximity of a human there is just this compelling to do as they're told and it it's not a pleasant feeling either <laughs> so you can tell when uh when you're being overshadowed it's this thing where you gosh it you just you have to do something it, it's not that you want to it's not that it's voluntarily it's another entity taking over your limbs your your body your mind and your soul just kind of has to sit there and look out the window it's like being inside of a giant robot looking outside but the robot is making all the moves and you can't do anything but watch it, it's not a pleasant thing no and there's multiple references to uh famine coming through plagues and pestilence make note of that and who happens to be the head of the palestinian authority it's mahmoud and if you wanted to write his first name and just put m for initial abbas that does phonetically sound like mabus does it not and he happens this is new uh <laughs> This was just updated yesterday. Palestinian Authority President Abbas approves a new government. Mahmoud Abbas, who has led the Palestinian Authority for nearly two decades, approved the new government formed by Prime Minister Mohammed Mustafa. So Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas on Thursday, March 28th, approved the new government presented by Prime Minister Mohammed Mustafa, who aims to see it play a role in post-war Gaza. Mustafa said the top national priority for the new government, whose members are set to take office on Sunday, would be the end of the war in Gaza. He added that the cabinet will work on formulating visions to reunify the institutions, including assuming responsibility for Gaza. In his first, first public appearance after his nomination, Mustafa talked of transparency, zero tolerance for corruption, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what we see here is a new government being formed, 
and who's right at the center point, Mahmoud Abbas. So as far as who is most likely to be uh, the Mabus that soon dies, this, this feels significant. Um, this feels significant. Haven't seen it clearly, but it feels significant to me. And I wanted to share that with you. Um, I want to share this too, um, because this is the other person that feels really significant, and that's Mohammed bin Salman who um, also is known by his initials, MBS, or MBS. Just add an A, right? And A and U, Mabus, or Mabus. Hmm, uh, yeah, he feels so significant too, but I feel that he is the Arab prince inclined towards Persia. Uh, very nearly a million men invade Byzantium, which is you know modern-day Turkey, on the way, to Europe. So I think he is going to play a major role. Now, is, is it that he gets assassinated? Possibly. But boy, his energy is so dark. Uh, his energy is very strong and dark. Um, I, I, I could see... Um, I could see Muhammad Abbas being the sacrifice and, and him being the one that, that leads the charge into, I mean, he, he feels dark, like people might talk of him as perhaps like the Mahdi or something like that. Um, I don't know, we'll have to see, but I just wanted to bring that up as well. And then this is interesting because this is another quatrain. It talks about in the country of Arabia, Felix, that will be born one powerful in the law of Muhammad to vex Spain, to conquer Grenada, and more by sea against the Ligurian people. Well, Arabia, Felix is playing a, a large part in what we're watching right now. That literally is Yemen. Uh, you know, in, in, in the Latin terms for this particular area. So is there somebody uh, of significance that's going to stick out? Maybe we've already seen them from, from Yemen. It, it's just fascinating, really, to look at this. The Arab prince of Mars, the sun, Venus, and Leo will subdue the rain realm of church by sea towards Persia, nearly a million men. The true serpent will invade Byzantium and Egypt. There was also uh, another quatrain, which is again talking about uh, Mercury and Mars in Pisces. And I asked Cindy to translate that astrologically. I said, do we have that going on right now? And she said, e yeah, actually we do. Well, you know, I, I put it in my software <clears throat> and looked it up, and it is, uh, just to keep in mind, this is Vedic. This is where the true positions are in accordance to the tilt of the earth. So uh, it's going to be different from Western. But when I looked it up and I poked around, uh, what I found was from April 23rd to May 9th, it looks like that's the conjunction we have. Now, on April 23rd, we also have Venus in the mix. That might soften things a little bit, maybe, maybe, but I, I don't know, you know, and you have uh, those two together in the same room. Um, they're they're not going to be very happy or, or very content with one another and, and energies can kind of go awry. Now, I'm not as good as Joni Patrice. She can plug that information in and she can tell you when uh, uh, Mars and Mercury are going to be at their closest points together. I'm not fine-tuned enough to do that, but I can tell you those were the date ranges that we're looking at from 423 to 59. Yeah, and the century 5, verse 27, verse to the left there, through fire and arms, not far from the Black Sea. Not far from the Black Sea, which is right now the whole Ukrainian conflict centered around uh, the Black Sea. Uh, he will come from Persia to occupy Trezibond, Pharaoh's Methylon, to tremble the sun happy, the Adriatic, which is to uh, the east of Italy, covered in Arab blood. So, you know, again, we see this is this is all uh, um, just this is all out war between uh, Russia, China, 
allied with most Islamic nations and others, North Korea and will be involved as well, uh, many African countries, many, many Latin American countries, probably even Mexico will be on that side against the U.S. and NATO. So this, this feels that this is all coming down at this point in time. You know, the other thing is uh, the great theater, uh, Phil, that, that famous quake, the great quake um, that really literally shakes the entirety of the globe. Um, you know, that might be um, most likely, I think that is in May. And, and it's 20 degrees into Taurus, which again brings us around May 10th. So you can see how everything fits so neatly and so tightly together in this puzzle. Uh, here, meanwhile, April 8th solar eclipse will affect the electric field around our Earth. NASA is launching sounding rockets just before, during, and after to better understand our planet. Mr. MBB was talking about this last night, also talking about how they're not actually launching along the eclipse path, but in different areas. You know, again, uh, there's, <laughs> there's another reference um, to... It's an interesting one. Uh, it talks about a hundred leagues from uh, the pole, and the way it reads is it it, it talks about in my mind it, it's it's a Nostradamus quatrain where he can't understand exactly what he's seeing, but he's seeing satellites, and he's seeing uh, the effect and how satellites can do all sorts of, of things from way above the earth. And I, again, 1555, even being an insider that probably had some knowledge to the reality of the church, the reality of uh, the draconian uh, control grid, it still might be mind boggling to see and try to describe um, satellites that could be also utilized to deliver that first blow to the U.S. with, again, uh, rods from God. So, you know, he, he was using interesting terms, and he's, he used words like Ray Paz and, and Samobrin uh, that are anagrams that nobody, I, I feel, has given a good explanation, and, and I don't have an explanation either for those particular words, but the Ray Paz one, um, yeah, maybe, and, you know, maybe it's not necessarily even the tungsten steel rods of God. It's, it's some sort of energy weapon that's going to be used. That's going to look like a nuclear strike is what it feels like. Mm -hmm. I think it's just very curious, you know, with the eclipse and now they're going to be testing the electromagnetic field and it, it just goes to show how much our bodies do change. I mean, I didn't know any of that science stuff that they were talking about. I can just tell you from this standpoint, from a shamanic standpoint, walking between the worlds, that our bodies are going to change. And and the more sensitive you are, the more you're going to feel it. So that's why uh, people... I mean, if, if it's important to you, it may not be important for everyone with your energy body to get these upgrades and changes. You do, you want really want to start now. You want to start taking care of yourself. You want to start eating right. You want to start drinking more water and preparation for this. But I think the one thing that I thought was really, really curious is it's not just this dimension that it's going to be affecting. It's going to be affecting multiple dimensions which is really really kind of interesting in and of itself but the difference between us and the other dimensions is the other dimensions they know to stabilize themselves they know what is going on they know how to you know reap the benefits of any type of change like this so it's just something that we're simply not taught but it's been there all along in the muslim invasion of europe that nostradamus misread this is from Osho News, this is from September 7th, 2015, in an interview with John Hogue. John Hogue wrote um, Nostradamus and the New Millennium, a book that I had e eons ago, I mean, and it's been revised, and I got to tell you, the, the, revi the revision is horrible, because they took out everything pretty much in, uh, about this particular time. 
And I do think that John Hoag was accurate in his first edition. I think he had insight. I think he had spark. Uh, I think he was picking up on things. Uh, and I think that he was um, giving a pretty clear explanation of the quatrains, especially involving, uh, really just involving the Muslim invasion part of World War Three. And here, what you see, okay, this is from 2015, right? John Hogue, also known as Diane Arjuna, speaks on the recent events of Syrians migrating to Europe in light of Nostradamus' prophecies. A close friend and fellow traveler on the path of meditation asks why so many of you are asking, especially my European readers, facing an unprecedented surge of refugees stamping across their borders. This is all the way back in 2015. 2015. Um, Bhagawati, and he says, I recall a prophecy by Nostradamus, or was it somebody else, that Europe would be overrun by Muslims starting in France. John Hogue said, yes, it's Nostradamus. He saw it as a Muslim invasion. Unlike most of my competition over the last 30 years who take this literally to mean a military invasion, my interpretations of the verses on the matter have always stuck to what indeed I believe actually was an immigrant invasion. Uh, he says, I think Nostradamus misread his signs spinning upon them. The angst of Christians in the 16th century about imminent military invasion and conquest. But Suleiman, the Magnificent, and the Ottoman Empire. The Muslim superpower was at its most aggressive stage of westward conquest during the lifetime uh, when Christianity was sorely divided by Protestant and Catholic tensions. Back in 2009, April, I had an interchange with a reader concerning just how Nostradamus mistook invasions for immigrant waves of Muslims into Europe. It was published for Hogue Prophecy, 27th of August, 2010. Please read the whole article uh, on Islamophobia. So what I think is it's total BS what he's giving us right here that he's been threatened is my feel uh, uh, that he was too close to the actual truth and so you know the power structure will will bully you and I think he was bullied and and he retracted and he revised and did it uh, in a way that the power structure um, yeah, we'll leave him alone, so to speak, and let him do his thing. Because I think he was dead on before. So if you could find old copies um, of Nostradamus and the New Millennium, it's going to be a hell of a lot more accurate than, than what he's been talking about now. Um, because, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I read it and, and it's stuck in my head. Um, and of course, I have um, books on his um, quatrains, just books with the quatrains with no commentary as well. So you could let your own insight uh, develop into those. Um, but here, yeah, I feel that the power structure got to him. He was way too close. And right now, when you go searching, you really got to search deep uh, to find anything about the Muslim invasion. Why? Because it's happening next month. Hmm. There is there is a lot going on. There is just so much going on. And, you know, it all kind of buttons up together quite nicely. Uh, I mean, what can you say? We have a lot going on. Yeah, absolutely. And I hope it doesn't manifest because if it doesn't manifest, then we've seriously shifted timelines, and I'll take that any day over yes. being accurate. <laughs> you know, it was, we're we're not about <clears throat> we're not about being rich. We're, we're again, we're not rich. <laughs> no, typically we we've we've lived in spots that are uh, seriously considered to be uh, <laughs> squalors. And Cindy comes out squalor, <laughs> poverty. <laughs> Yeah, where we are, most people live in poverty where we are. And that's typically the places that that we've lived. We, we have never lived in mansions, never lived in anything like that. And it's really by choice, too, because we just... And, and you know, for those that pursue those things, that's you. We just, um, you know, we have our purpose, and, and this is uh, our purpose. You know, really, though, life is what you make it. It's truly what you make it. We all have control over our own 
own surroundings. So yes, we did choose a home that is, you know, on the low end of <laughs> any scale, but, but it's functional. We don't have any leaks. We have running water. We have hot water. I can do dishes. I remember when we were staying out in the, the camper and we had no running water and I was doing dishes out back and under a spigot in buckets with cold water i mean that was horrible but you know what that did for me that makes me so grateful every time i do dishes now i have hot water (laughs) i'll never forget that so you know we can take these things in life and you 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 make of them as you will and that's what we do absolutely and, and i think it's too in preparation because we we know uh that it it it's not going back to what it was and and this is going to be very very hard for those that have lived lives of luxury um to acclimate to a harsh life so you know while many people have lived much harsher lives than us especially when you look to you know people how people live in most places in what you would call third world countries you know we live lives of luxury because we actually have a roof over our head and and that's what so many people don't have but at the same time I know uh, if if we are to not become assimilated into the Borg, it, you know, it's it's going to be challenging. It is going to be challenging, but these are the times that really, really try your soul. And and this is why so many people incarnated, <clears throat> because it, it is going to lend um, true <laughs> learning experience. There, there's there's nothing uh, that that teaches us more about ourselves than facing adversity and we are going to be facing it so it's it's all about how do we react to it do we stay uh, grounded centered and really try to pull up those that are is possible for us to pull up and shift a paradigm because this is the challenge can we shift a paradigm can we change the outcome I think we can. I don't think anything is set in stone. I, I understand that they have their plans. Absolutely. And and they, they do hold a lot of the cards and they have cards up their up their sleeves all the time ready to go because they will lie, cheat and steal. This is what the system does. Meanwhile, we had an X one point one class uh, flare as well. You will see the sun react when when the big events start happening uh, again, you'll see more big events coming from the sun and from nature because they are on our side. And that's the thing to understand. Don't fear the sun. Don't fear uh, cosmic alignments uh, and the natural order because the system, it, there's nothing natural about the system. They, they have us fearing, you know, going out and playing in the mud like little kids. There's nothing to fear with that. You should fear the sunscreen you're lathering on your body. In my opinion, that's my opinion. Uh, You should fear anything that comes uh, out of these big F-A-R-M-A factories. Nature is on our side. They want to convince you otherwise. We were meant to play. We were meant to enjoy life. We were meant to explore and have experiences. But what do they do? They have so many children locked up in these rooms with expectations of, you know, writing things down and doing things that are completely, completely against the human, the human grain. And then they wonder why so many children are bouncing off the walls. Your children, our children need to be out where there are no walls. If there's no walls, there's nothing to bounce off of. And they're going to have fun. I mean, this is just great fun. I remember we had mud pits when I lived up in Idaho and we went and played and I'm just like this. It was a blast. I couldn't think of a better time in my life. And, you know, I have a lot of those memories up in Idaho and and I just loved it. And and whenever we're outside now, you know, I can get lost in time. It's like time goes away. We're no longer in this dimension where time, I mean, time only counts in this, in this world, in this 3D world. And it's, it's, I'm just not good at time. I kind of make mistakes on appointments and calendars because it's it's not my forte. I don't, I don't function well here, (laughs) but here I am. So, you know, you got to make the best of it. We really, really do. And perception is very important but yeah i mean go find a mud hole and play in it it's just fun it's just fun 
So I'll leave you with Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu, which literally translates into me all beings everywhere be happy and free and that's something that you know terrifies the dark side they don't want us being free loka samasta suki no bhavantu om shanti 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 source bless and namaste namaste